Hi, and welcome to our online lecture series here in world history. My sincere hope is that these lectures that you'll find here on YouTube will really serve two purposes. Uh, for my students, I really hope that it gives you an opportunity to rewatch these lectures that, that we hear in class and, and really get to deepen your knowledge of world history. But it also will help you if you ever miss class and you need to obtain the lecture notes. Now, most people think it's okay to just copy the notes from somebody in class, but you miss out on the stories. You miss out on the explanations. So uh, I really hope for those of you who are gone on vacation or sick or whatever it might be, that you use these lectures to really help yourself get prepared for each assessment in world history. Now we're going to kick off our first unit today called the earliest humans. Really what we want to try to do in this unit is try to figure out what were early humans like? Uh, what did they do? Um, you know, wh where did they go? Things like that. And so in this specific lecture we're going to focus on uh, human migration and the beginning of agriculture. Now, with each one of these uh, lectures that we're going to have, there's always going to be a question or two associated with it. And these questions will be test questions. Uh, some people call them essential questions. Some people call them free response questions. We call them constructive response questions. So the two questions that you're going to be able to answer after hearing today's lecture are as follows. The first one says, describe what early humans were like and why they migrated out of Africa. Certainly we're going to cover that information quite well today. Second question says, trace the development of the agricultural revolution as well as its causes and effects. Uh, since most of these lectures are broken up into two parts, you're actually going to be able to get the answer to question one in uh, part one of this lecture, and you'll get the answer to question two in part two. Uh, so that'll work out really nicely for us. But really, what are we going to look at? What are we going to learn? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about an introduction to history today, more so how history is determined when you don't have any written records in which to uh, rely on. So we're going to kind of talk about how paleontologists and anthropologists do their job to figure out what uh, early humans were like. We'll talk about important evidence that has been found in Africa that may or may not link uh, early humans to uh, much older beings than originally thought. So we'll talk about that evidence. Uh, we'll talk about the agricultural revolution, talk about what farming meant for early humans, because it really is a game changer. It, it changes uh, the entire planet um, in terms of how humans use it and certainly how uh, we as humans uh, continue to progress and develop after that. And then we'll talk about human migrations out of Africa. Because uh, humans, the evidence that we have says we started in Africa, but we didn't stay in Africa. Clearly we've populated all corners of the globe. So that's what we are going to look at in this lecture. So, uh, before we get started, one of the questions I'm going to have my students uh, think about in class, a little think-pair-share, is this. The question says, how do we study history? if we have no written records in which to read or interpret. Um, if you're watching this lecture at home, I want you to just think about that question. Maybe jot something down in the margin. If you were in my class, we would uh, write our thoughts down on, in our margins of our notes. We would share our thoughts with an elbow partner, and then we would uh, be prepared to share that out with the whole group. Clearly, if you're watching this at home, you can't do that, but I at least want you to think about this question. How do we study history if we have no written records in which to read or interpret? So go ahead and think about that. That's sort of our introductory question here today. When you're ready, you can go ahead and move on. All right, let's set the stage. Who are we? We want to figure out who early humans are because it can tell us a lot about who we are today as a species. Now, evidence suggests humans could be much older than originally thought. And we're going to look at a couple of pieces of evidence that have been found that really kind of shook up the scientific community uh, when they were dated. So, in order to do their job, scientists and historians use artifacts to search for answers. Now, that only makes sense to us if we understand what an artifact is. An artifact is a human-made object, like tools and jewelry. So, if you're uncovering a, a site that, you know, somebody lived at maybe decades ago, hundreds of years ago, or even thousands of years ago, you're going to look at the um, things they left us. Now that might be bones. We can learn a lot from uh, fossil records, uh, but we can also learn a lot from the, the actual things, the actual 
pieces uh, that people made uh, and used in their everyday life, and that can tell us a lot about who they are. Um, so artifacts become a really big deal. If you find a clay bowl or, um, you know, like a little uh, knife that was sharpened from bone, uh, we can reasonably assume we know what those things are used for. Um, you know, bowls typically hold liquid or food of some type. Uh, you know, a knife would be used for uh, skinning an animal hide or perhaps even for self-defense or, or warfare. Um, and so using those kind of you know, inferences, we can start determining the culture of uh, who lived there. And that's really kind of a big deal when it comes to uh, studying early humans. Now, unfortunately, prehistory can leave more questions than answers. Uh, prehistory is simply the time before the invention of writing. So the question I'd asked you on the previous slide is really how do we study history if we have no written records? Because humans existed prior to the invention of writing. And if we want to know what they did, who they were, we have to use these artifacts. We have to use these different things we find. Um, you know, we live in an era now where everything is incredibly well documented. We have uh, video cameras, we have phones, we have security cameras, we have people writing books and blogging and all sorts of different things. We know that those records will last. And so if somebody wants to study us 5,000 years from now, all they have to do is look at our written records. But early humans didn't have that, so we have to go off of the other clues that are found. Uh, and that's a little bit about what we're going to talk about here today. Now, it's very important to understand the story of early humans is not complete, and there are many questions left to answer. What I mean by that is there's really two prevailing ideas uh, for where humans came from, and you're not going to be forced to pick a side, but we need to acknowledge both of them because uh, certainly uh, there are people on both sides that are very passionate about what they believe in, and I'm not going to uh, tell you to abandon your ideas. For example, the first idea is creation or creationism, idea that we as humans were put here by a higher power. A higher power put humans on earth in the form that we are today um, is typically one of the main uh, arguments for where humans came from. Uh, certainly there's some strong Christianity ties to that um, that many people believe in very strongly. I'm not going to tell you that that's wrong. I'm not going to tell you that that's right. I just want to present that as an option. The other, of course, is evolution. And evolution is a theory, which means it has not been proven yet. There's a lot of good evidence out there that suggests humans have evolved from another being, such as an ape or something like that, but it has not been proven yet. Uh, so as we move forward looking at where early humans came from, um, these might be thoughts that you would have. Certainly uh, there could be a third option. There could be an idea that a higher power put humans on this planet and then we evolved into the beings we are today. So you could see a combination of the two. But again, we're not going to prove or disprove either side of those. We're just going to look at some of the evidence that has been found. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing thing. We may never have a complete answer to where humans are, uh, are from, at least in terms of what the evidence tells us. But we're going to look at some of it anyway. Now, um, as we look at the interesting evidence that has been found in Africa, we have to acknowledge a couple of really key groups of people. And the first one is anthropologists. Anthropologists are people who study culture. They work with paleontologists, which are people who study fossils, in an attempt to use artifacts and fossils to understand early humans' culture. I mean, these are the experts. They're the ones who can look at that clay bowl or that little knife or look at where the bones of people were found and reasonably determine what those things mean. Were they a peaceful people? Were they a warlike people? Um, were they poor? Were they wealthy? Those are things that we look at to try to understand early humans' way of life. So ultimately, we're trying to figure out their culture, which is a people's unique way of life. That includes their customs, their values, their attitudes, their beliefs, the way they dress, the w things they eat, the, the music they listen to. All of that is part of a culture. And uh, when you try to understand um, who anybody is, whether it's we here in America, uh, Minnesota, or maybe it's people in China, or maybe it's people in ancient Greece, or uh, maybe people in South America. They all have a unique culture, and uh, to really understand who they are, we have to look at what that culture really tells us. Now, the first piece of evidence I want to look at is Lucy. Lucy uh, is a really, really big deal, and uh, you can see she's clearly a skeleton. And I don't think looking at this right now tells you that much. So let's talk a little bit about why Lucy was a big deal. 
Lucy is an unusually complete skeleton of a female hominid. They say she's about 40% complete. Now, if that was finding a body of somebody who died in the last 10 years, that would be really incomplete. But when you look at her age and you think of it, we have 40% of her, her bones, that's a pretty big deal. I'm going to reveal that here at the end. So what we know about Lucy so far is she is a complete skeleton of a female hominid. But your, your spidey sense should be going off because you're like, what's a hominid? Uh, I hear that word. I don't know what that means. Well, hominid is simply a being that walks upright on two legs. So you can look at her uh, bones, specifically at her pelvis bone, and we know that because of similar creatures like humans or various apes, that she walked upright on two legs. And that we can also look at her bones and we know that she's female. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, she was discovered by Donald Johansson in 1974 in Africa, and he gave her the name Lucy because of the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. But with these discoveries, nothing matters unless there's an age attached to it. I mean, if this was a small child that had been born and died a few years ago, I'd be like, okay, that's maybe sad, tragic, what happened to her? But it wouldn't set the scientific community on fire like it did. Because once they carbon dated this and looked at all the evidence and really able, able to see a time period in which Lucy lived, they were able to date those bones at being roughly 3.5 million years old. That's a big deal. What that tells us is something was walking around on two legs 3.5 million years ago. Now, you're going to hear me say this a little bit later, but Lucy's not human. She has different characteristics. Her bones are a little bit different than ours. But if you're looking at a link to evolution, trying to prove evolution, maybe, just maybe, this is a step in that direction. But it does show us that something was walking upright on two legs 3.5 million years ago. That's a big deal. The second piece of evidence found in Africa that we're going to talk about today is the Laetoli footprints. The Laetoli footprints uh, were made by two hominids, uh, and they were preserved in volcanic ash in Africa. Laetoli is an area in Africa. And they were found by Mary Leakey, and this is actually a drawing. This is actually Mary Leakey. This is not just a random piece of clip art. Um, she found the Laetoli footprints, and excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so what happened was, is there was a volcanic eruption. And when there's a volcanic eruption, a lot of ash goes up in the air and eventually comes down and blankets the earth. At that point in time, it, it rained. And when that rain hits that ash, it becomes like a mud, almost like concrete. And at that point, something walked through the this ash. We know it's two distinct uh hominids because the footprints are different and you see no knuckle marks you see no other indicating uh factor again i apologize there's no other evidence in these footprints that show that something was walking on four limbs rather than two and we know that the two footprints belong to two distinct different hominids so that's a big deal and then of course after they walked through it there was more ash that landed on top of these footprints which essentially preserved them for a very long time again none of this matters if this is something that happened last week we would just disregard it however we dated them again and we saw that they are 3.6 million years old so again, right around the time of Lucy, this proved to us that something was walking around upright on two legs 3.6 million years ago. Now, neither Lucy nor the Laetoli footprints were made by actual humans. We know that because we haven't found any fossil records of humans that date back that long. So reasonably assuming uh, that they couldn't have been humans then. That's just until we find some fossil evidence that suggests otherwise, we can't we can't assume that those footprints were made by humans or that Lucy was human. We know Lucy's not human because of her bone structure. Now, there were other beings before us that walked up right on two legs. So maybe the Laetoli footprints were made by one of these, such as Cro-Magnons, uh, Homo erectus, Neanderthals. They all walked the earth on two legs before we did. And you can see those images here below uh, kind of suggesting that, um, you know, these are some of the different beings that existed before us. But no link of any of these beings has been made to modern humans. That's why I like this image here. Got the old... 
a uh, little red X that used to show you uh, on internet web pages that uh, uh, an image did not load, and that's intentional here, saying, yeah, we've got humans, and we've got other beings that walked upright, but we don't see any clear evidence that we have actually evolved from them. Certainly a lot of people think that, and we've got evidence that might suggest it, but it hasn't been proven yet. Um, so the missing link uh, is maybe still out there. Maybe it's still in the Earth somewhere, we just haven't uncovered it yet. Or maybe it never existed at all, and we didn't evolve from those beings. But either way, it's exciting to see that something was walking upright that long ago, the time of Lucy or the late Tolly footprints. Well, we're going to end part one there. Um, when you come back in part two, we're going to talk a little bit more about how humans migrated out of Africa and what farming did for early humans, because it really is a big game changer. So go ahead and hit stop and queue up part two.